You're watching Swipe, coming up on this week's show. The technology being developed to protect athletes from serious head injuries. How super is super? I get a go in the supercar made with a super strong material. And if even that's not enough super for you, we've got Mario, Batman and more in our games review. Welcome to Swipe. There's been a lot of talk over the past year in sport about concussion and head injuries. Sports teams and governing bodies around the world have been trying to work out ways to better protect the players. Well, this week, Stu has been speaking to the people using technology to try and solve the problem. In some sports, taking a hit is just a part of the experience. At this judo class, Anthony is wearing fit guard, a mouth guard with a difference. Its traffic light system shows potential head injuries. The mouth guard can measure two different rates of acceleration. We can measure linear acceleration, how fast the skull is starting and stopping, and rotational acceleration, how fast the head is spinning. Additionally, our magnetometer allows us to know where we're at in space. Where is the head facing when it receives an impact? Making a red warning happen for real isn't a great idea, but Anthony has a way to show us safely. If I have to shake this really hard, it'll trigger an impact. Red indication means you've been hit with a significant amount of force that needs to be addressed. The data is then displayed on an app. This is just one of the emerging technologies designed to help protect athletes. Startup company Jolt makes a small sensor that can be clipped onto headgear like a helmet or goggles. The Lynx Impact Assessment System does a similar job. This technology was originally developed for the US Army. There is a, a huge conversation in the States about sport-related head injuries. Parents and coaches have a desire to use this tool that could help expand their visibility of these head impacts. So at the end of the day, the athlete, the parent, or the coach is empowered to make uh, a decision to keep the players healthy. Handheld brain scanners could be used ringside in British boxing soon, and some devices aim to prevent injury rather than just measure it, like the Vicis American football helmet seen here on the left. The makers say they want to use the same level of sophistication that is put into vehicle safety. And athletes are keen to use this kind of tech. It's something that I need to get used to because you know, a lot of people, if you have to train with it, it definitely, it definitely helps you with your fitness level. Um, if it, if it was a nice custom fit my mouth really well, then yeah, of course, I, I would love to wear something like this. These devices are being tested in a wide variety of sports, including rugby, American football, skiing and NASCAR. They could be the answer to protecting players in the short term and telling us more about the long term effects of hard impact sports. Stuart Duggan, Sky News. Stay with us still to come. I'll be test driving a world first prototype supercar. That's coming right up after a roundup of this week's tech news. Sky, the owner of Sky News, is starting a phone network. Sky Mobile will focus on data, with customers able to roll over their unused data at the end of each month and change their allowance when they like. Pokemon Go is the most popular game of 2016 on Google Play. The Android App Store has announced the most downloaded entertainment of the year. Star Wars The Force Awakens was the most popular film and Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead the top TV shows. Buildings begun on a new high-tech roller coaster costing more than £16 million at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. The ride, named Construction 2018, will be the UK's first to have what's called a double launch, which gives it powerful thrusts of acceleration. It's also set to have the most interactions in the world. That's where the carriages pass close to other rides for an extra thrill. And President Obama has released an interactive holiday greetings card using augmented reality. Users need to download a free app and point their phone at a $1 bill to take a 360-degree tour of the White House through all four seasons. It was made by London-based Nexus Studios. Stick around for Hugh. The puzzle adventure is in our games review, but first... Now, earlier this year, a British manufacturer became the first to build a car with graphene in some of the panels. If you've never heard of graphene before, it's a fairly new material. It's 200 times stronger than steel, but it's just one atom thick. I got to go to Briggs Automotive Company's base in Liverpool to learn more about the car and to have a go in it. Mm -hmm. 
If you're gonna spend over 160,000 pounds on a car, you want it to be worth it. This one's got a special inbuilt ingredient, graphene, the thinnest material on earth. It's ultra lightweight, yet stronger than steel and carbon fiber. So which bits have got graphene in? So on this prototype development car, we chose the, the rear wheel arch and diffuser section. We found a part which encompassed all the problems and all the challenges you would get in any part of the car. It starts about halfway back from the front of the car and all the way to this section. It's the whole rear three quarter of the car in effect. They're keen on world firsts at BAC with levels of personalization made possible by some of the latest technology. Certain features of its mono supercar can be molded to fit individual drivers. Take the steering wheel as, a, as an example. Here we start off with a fairly rudimentary model and on the, the edge of it we have a soft clay. The customer holds this and creates an impression which obviously ac accurately reflects their grip. From that we can then scan that data into the computer model and produce a mould and produce a 3D print. BAC is the first to build a prototype supercar with graphene in the rear wheel arches. The theory is the stronger the material, the less you need, and that saves weight. Graphene is young though, only extracted from graphite for the first time in 2004, but there are high hopes for it in other areas of motoring too. Perhaps the key development for graphene as a material in car manufacturing going forward is in battery technology. Um, as I say, graphene is a conductor and uh, the theory says that graphene batteries will be lighter, uh, more powerful, more dense. And this is what we need um, if we are truly going to be driving electric cars in the future. The car isn't for sale yet. BAC is still durability testing the prototype, the results of which could dictate whether other manufacturers follow suit. And you could say, I got to help with that in my own way. Woo! Gemma Morris, Sky News. If you've got a gamer to buy Christmas presents for this year, you're in the right place for ideas. You've only got three weeks left. So here's our very own wise man, Gav. Telltale's Batman is shaping up to be probably their best game, I think, in my opinion. Um, it always happens with Telltale games. I start playing them and I kind of dip off. I almost dipped off with Batman on episode three because I felt like the story was sort of starting to wane a little bit. But episode four is really, really strong. I mean, we get a really, really good look at the Joker. And obviously, any Batman story, whatever, if it's a film, it's a video game, it's a cartoon, is always going to be building up to the point where Batman has a really good sit-down chat with the Joker and that's exactly what happens in this episode it's a lot more sort of dialogue based and a lot more detective based which is when the Telltale Batman series is at its best so I know a lot of people were sort of a little bit disappointed with uh, episode 3 but if you were I would really really suggest going back and having a look at episode 4 because it's shaping up to be one of the best ones since Fables and Fables just had this incredible storyline running throughout it and this is one of the best Batman storylines that I've ever seen in anything, I think, because it really gives Batman a chance to be a detective, and, you know, he's the world's greatest detective, so having him sort of, like, pinpoint little bits of uh, things that happen is really, really good. Now, this is good television! Hugh is a puzzle game that's been out for a while, but generally, ever since I saw it, like, I think I played it on PS4 and a tiny bit on PC, but the only thing I kept saying to people was, this will be a perfect game for the Vita, because it's sort of little bite-sized mini puzzles all to do with colour. It's beautiful, um, it looks incredible, and even on, like, the Vita's small screen, it still looks really, really good, and it's really, really striking as well, because, as I said, all the puzzles are based in these weird colours. Um, I'm not very good at it, but it doesn't mean it's not fun at all. But it's perfect for the Vita because if you're playing it on a commute or you're playing it just, you know, on your lunch hour or something like that, you can really sort of dive into the world and then, you know, play it for a little bit and come back to it because it's set up like that in these sort of small little bite-sized puzzles that along the way. Um, for me, it's the best release of it because it really feels like they've put a lot of effort uh, into the port over from console to the Vita. And you can sort of tell that because they didn't release it straight away. It's been a little bit of a gap so obviously the developers have been working on making this like the best version that it can possibly be and I really think they have done that.
if you played Super Mario Maker on the Wii U, then you kind of know what you're getting. And it's basically Nintendo giving you, the people, every single Mario making tool that they use to make their own Mario levels. And the best thing about giving these tools to people is that people are awesome. And they've made generally some of the best Mario levels that I've ever played. So having on a 3DS is a really, really good way of sort of taking these levels with you and a couple of times when I was playing on the Wii U, I did generally think, I wish this was on 3DS because you kind of, Mario levels are really, really short, so you kind of want them on the go and you want them all the time. And also, like, you've got the stylus, you've got the little touch screen as well, so you can be really, really creative. Um, but some of the levels that people have been making, generally, you could spend hours and hours playing this game and never get bored. Well, that's it for this week. If you liked watching Swipe, you can watch any of our episodes in our YouTube playlist. Just type in Sky News Swipe and you can stay up to date with all the latest tech news throughout the week on Sky News on mobile, tablet, catch up, Sky Q and Snapchat. We'll be back next week. Hope you can join us then. Bye bye.